So we can do the advantages and disadvantages of coal. And coal definitely has some extremely large advantages. Um, the first advantage is that it's present in ample supplies around the world. There's a lot of coal out there. And because of that, it will supply the needs of mankind for a long time. So throughout your lifetime and those of your kids and grandkids, there's still going to be a coal around providing energy. Um, not only will it last a long time, it's also spread around the globe, and we have large supplies here within the United States. So the United States has its own energy supply, and that's good for our national security. It means that no other government can disrupt our economy by disrupting our energy supply. We can dig our own coal, we can provide our own coal um, to generate electricity, and therefore our energy supply is determined by this nation and no other nations. That's good for national security. Not only is it good for national security, it's also good for economic security. It means that industry doesn't have to worry about other nations and what they're doing. It's just our nation that controls our energy. And also, because it's within our borders, our workers and our companies have to go out and dig the coal out of the ground. So that provides a good job base and a good tax supply to the nation. So huge, huge advantages for coal being within our borders. The next advantage is that it provides an extremely high amount of energy. And we use most of the coal to produce electricity. So as you sit there um, using your computer to watch this lecture series, you probably have the lights on in your house, your AC system or your heating system's working, your refrigerator's going away there, your freezer's on, your hot water heater's working. Most of that energy is being supplied by coal, burnt to produce electricity in our power plants, and it's an extremely useful uh, energy source. It's also extremely low cost. Um, you, you may grumble every time you get your electricity bill, and as I said, most of that electricity is produced from coal-fired power plants, but it is a low-cost energy source that has been around for a long time. So we know uh, how to extract coal efficiently. We know how to burn coal and get high energy yields from it. The technology is developed, and therefore that doesn't mean lots and lots of investment into an energy source that may not work out. We know this has worked out. We know it's going to work. It's a bit like when you go down to the car dealership and you can buy a make of car that everybody knows that's always reliable, that's got a good price on it. So you can go and you can buy yourself you know, a Honda and know that that's going to be a car that will last a long time, that has a very good track record. Rather than a Telsa who's never you've never heard of, um, and Telsa costs you know, 10 times as much, and you don't know whether you're going to buy this car and it's going to function well, or whether it will just always need repairing. Um, you might be sp spending more, but is this, is this the most efficient way to go? Now, obviously there are disadvantages as well, and the disadvantages are large. Digging coal out the ground produces large amounts of pollution. Uh, it disrupts habitats, destroys the habitat where you actually are digging. And when you dig, you have to remove a large amounts of soil and rock over the coal layer. And when you dig off those, you have to put them somewhere. So that rock and soil that you dig out to get to the coal, that's called the overburden. Where do you put the overburden? Wherever you put it, you destroy that habitat as well. So for each area of land that you are digging out to get to coal, you would destroy another area equal in volume to put the overburden. So there's large amounts of land disturbance, habitat destruction with getting to coal. Um, digging it out also has a severe threat to human health. Um, coal mining is an extremely dirty job and it produces a disease called black lung um, which costs the government every year in terms of uh, 
payments to people that are living with black lung disease, social security payments. So there is a, th a threat to human health as we are mining our coal. Other problems with coal is that it releases large amounts of CO2 when burnt. Coal, of all the fossil fuels, is by far the dirtiest fuel when we burn it. It produces CO2, more CO2 than any other fuel source, that's been linked with increasing the temperature of the planet. It releases mercury and uh, leads to methyl mercury uh, pollution in our rivers and lakes. It produces more radioactivity than nuclear power plants do. And when you burn coal and store coal, radiation is released. It produces NOx, nitrous oxide gases, that cause acid rain. It releases SOx, the sulfur oxide gases that lead to acid rain. And the list goes on and on. It produces particulate pollution um, that causes damage to lungs. So of all the fossil fuels, coal is by far the most pollutant. Unfortunately, those pollution costs, those environmental costs, are not normally included in the price of using coal. These extrinsic costs, these outside costs of the fuel, are very difficult to gauge and put a, a dollar value on so that when you use the coal, you're paying for the cleanup or the prevention of that pollution. And it's always hard to go back and add extra costs to it. Every single one of us that pays an electric bill uh, definitely does not want to see an increase. Um, so it's very hard to include environmental costs in the cost of the actual fuel itself. So we've got ups and downs. One of the biggest upsides of coal is going to be that it's around for a long time and the US has lots and lots of coal. So it's good for our national security. Um, it's good for our economy. Downsides, it's by far the most polluting fossil fuel there is. It produces more carbon dioxide and any other pollution than all of the others put together. So large amounts of pollution come from this energy source. Now oil is our next re non-renewable energy source we're going to cover. And again, your textbook will tell you that oil is produced mainly from the decay of ancient marine life. Now, um, oil has to be removed from the ground using oil wells. And once more, we're going to have good things about oil and bad things about oil. Make sure that you look in your textbook and read up on the actual extraction methods of getting crude oil from the ground. We need to know that there, uh, traditionally, um, oil, you've all seen the movies, you've all seen that this, this standard idea where they drill an oil well and poof, out would come the gusher, oil pouring out. And there are oil wells where that pressure causes the oil to come out of the, of the ground as just a gusher. But this does not last for long. Right? Once that pressure is initially released, you get you know, a few days or weeks of actual flowing oil. But from then on, you have to physically suck the oil out the ground. And it's not a lake of oil that's down there. There's no underground lakes of oil. The oil is mixed in with impermeable rock. So permeable rock, that would be things like um, uh, gravel or shale or rock with a honeycomb nature. So you've got to suck this oil through rock and a nice way to, to uh, visualize and feel what that's like would be to go home and take a sponge. Just a sponge that you'd use for washing your car or washing your body, doing the dishes. And get a bowl, um, fill the, the sponge with water, then lift it out and shove it into your bowl. Then take a straw, push the straw into the sponge, and try and suck the water out of the sponge. So obviously use a clean sponge. Don't use one that's dirty, dirty, dirty. Take a nice clean sponge, fill it with water, stick a straw into it, and try and suck the water out of it. You know, the initial water that comes up the straw is pretty easy to get to. And then you have to suck really, really hard and very, very little of the water will come out. Uh, and after trying, if you pick up the sponge and squeeze it, 
large amounts of water were trapped inside the sponge and even though you sucked with your lungs as hard as you could you can't get that water out of there. Oil wells are just the same. When you initially pop the well it's easy to get the oil out. For the first year or two it's easy to get the water or the oil out and then no matter how hard you suck it will not come out. There's tons of oil left in the ground. So we need to have some enhanced recovery, second recovery and stripping recovery. Some way to repressurize the water, I'm sorry, to repressurize the well using water and force more oil out of it. So secondary recovery is just a way of getting extra oil out of an old well.